This is the most fun part of the painting. Steve live on Facebook at the Steve Tracy Gallery. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today and on this adventure. I hope you have your brushes ready and uh, as you can see, as you can see everyone, I uh, have a, a uh, orange canvas on the screen it looks yellow ochre but uh, welcome everyone on Paint with Steve on a live Facebook uh, event here at the Steve Tracy Gallery. I just wanted to uh, say first of all that uh, I really appreciate uh, reaching out to you guys and uh, if you are participating and or if you think you're going to participate please uh, uh, post it let us know I would like to find out how effective this is with reaching out to people and helping them paint. Uh, today I'm going to paint a uh, landscape water scene. I have a photo that I took off the television set. This is a photo of, uh, it's a, it was a special on Tom Thompson. And here he is in a canoe, um, or an actor in a canoe, uh, in the Muskokas, uh, uh, paddling on one of the, the uh, many, many lakes up there. Beautiful country. Um, what, I went ahead and, and drew out uh, some of this composition. Uh, looking at this reference, the math equation, the smallest value is white or light. The next size value in mass would probably be the midtone, and then the largest value in mass would be the dark. So that's going to be my equation, and that equation is uh, what I try to consider uh, before I paint because uh, the three threes, three shapes of three values in three unequal masses is the, uh, is the secret formula to a successful composition. So um, this reference provides it for me and uh, it just happened to be on a television program which also makes for good design because that math equation is a good compositional uh, for formula for anything uh, being observed in two dimensions. So uh, that's my equation. I'm going to start out with my light shapes. I've added in my, in my drawing, I've added in over here two birch trees and three rocks that are going to increase the size of the light shape. So um, I'm going to paint in my light shape now, and I want to start with the light shape in the boat, which is the edge of the the edge of the boat. And so I got a one-op brush. I'm painting with oils today. Now these are the same. This is the same palette I used from last week. And I enjoyed it so much, I think that I'm going to be painting in oils uh, for the next couple of sessions. So this is the light hitting just the rim of the canoe. And here is the This is uh, just a scene of what I found uh, is a favorite pastime of Canadians is canoeing in the summer. Um, there are just millions of lakes up there and they're filled with fish. So here's my, my light shape. That's the wake from the canoe and the paddle. And probably adjust that a little bit here and there. A little bit of a light shape on the top of his head. And his hand, and then here's the paddle. And his right hand is just resting on the edge of the canoe. 
Okay, so um, that's the white shape on the uh, figure and the boat. Now I'm going to do the, there's a rock right here. So I'm going to do a, a this is a, a, a grayer white shape. This is just a little rim on the rock. Now it's, this is basically, as even though I'm talking subject, like rock, canoe, figure, um, I'm thinking abstract as this whole white shape is a design unto itself. And, and maybe there's another little, little edge here. Okay, and then here are rocks. These are the uh, Canadian shield rocks coming through the water, kind of like big turtles. Um, they, uh, they're everywhere. They're very, very pretty. They, they look like they were landscaped. Well, they're landscaped by God, right? And, uh, but they look like they were landscaped by a gardener um, or a landscape designer. Um, and if you were to buy one of these rocks at a, at a garden center, they charge you a good penny for them, 45 cents a pound. So go figure how much that would be if you had a 2,000 pound rock. Okay, so here is uh, pieces of my white shape in my uh, Muskoka rocks. And, and then also my white shape is going to be part of this birch tree. So I, I had to add more whites into my, my reference because I didn't think there were enough for a sufficient white shape design. So I just chose to add some birch trees and as I'm, as I'm painting these lines, I broke it up here. I don't want to um, have too much geometry or perfection um, in the design. Uh, and I equate perfection to geometry. Um, so I'm looking at the chaos of nature. Okay. So there is my white shape. And then this is the water. When I'm done with the water, I'm going to put a white shape, a bigger white shape, um, all across the bottom part of the water to indicate um, the wind hitting the water and, and then the wind making a little bit of uh, ripples and then the light hitting the tops of those ripples. And I'll do that with a palette knife at the end. And that will be my white shape anchor. So, um, okay, so this is sufficient for me for the white shape. Um, now I'm going to paint in my brush. I'm going to use my big, no, this is a number 10 flat. Um, and and uh, so I'm going to go in and I'm actually, believe it or not, going to go in with black. And behind the trees, I'm going to paint a black. And I will be putting some color on top of this. In the uh, boreal forest of of uh, Ontario, um, they are so thick in the summer, you can barely walk through. And, and they also keep out a lot of light. And they truly um, have a very mysterious uh, sense about them because they're so dark. Um, and, uh, and, and besides that, it is uh, very moist up here. So they get plenty, all the plants get plenty of water and, uh, and everything grows. It seems like in my garden, every seed that I planted grew. Okay, so here's on the top of the rock. Okay. Um, just, uh, there's going to be a red blaze right in here. Um, okay, so painting around some of these foliage. I, 
I chose, uh, well, the neat thing about the Canadian forest is that it's boreal, and a boreal forest has about every variety of hard and soft wood that you can imagine. Um, and so if you like trees, come up to Canada. Um, okay, uh, but it's a great place to go and observe God's creation in nature. Um, it is uh, truly um, enchanting and miraculous in, in many, many ways. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paint uh, a dark shape up in here. And this is just my ground. Now, I did paint, it, paint the orange ground. The orange ground is going to be coming through here and there. Uh, these are tall pine trees. And, uh, and then there's going to be a blue spruce over there. And, and I'm painting right now around the negative shape of a white pine, which are so loved up here in Canada. They kind of look like California cypress trees where they have this incredible um, uh, propensity to bend with the wind as they grow. So as they're growing, um, they seem to actually be moving as they're standing still uh, in one and, be and being blown in one direction. But all the foliage grows uh, in the direction that the wind blows. And so they, they're very animated, and uh, I love them because um, each tree looks like a different character. And Prince Charles once said that trees are a metaphor for the human form, which uh, I like that. I think that's very, very spiritual. Um, and I like things that that reference spirituality and, uh, and the creation. That's just me. Okay, so I'm just painting in some dark shapes here. Okay, these are, this is a tall pine that's going way above. Okay, and just painting it what, what I call the negative space, well, which artists call the negative space. That's the space around an object, that's, that's the object. I'm just painting the space around the object, which is the dense forest behind the trees. And, and like I said, um, the smaller shape is light. The next size is mid-tone, and the largest is the dark. So the largest shape here is going to be the dark shape. Now, this big brush, this is a big bad boy brush. It, it does a lot of work and I can, I'll be coming back in. It, it unloads a lot of paint quickly. I'll be coming back in with my filbert brush. I just dipped into a little purple. You probably can't see that, but uh, has just an ever so tint of warmth to it. Okay, um, before I lose it, um, and I don't mean my mind, um, I'm going to paint in the white shape in the water of these birch trees. Now I'm painting, painted, painting them in a little darker. So it's a little darker gray in the water and I'm just kind of changing the direction of the tree itself. And because in the water reflections are just a little bit darker. I'm going to paint a, a few of these tops of these uh, turtle shell rocks. Look like turtle shells, but they really not. But they do have a lot of turtles in Canada. But they have a lot of they have a lot of everything but alligators. Alligators, um, and uh, what else don't they have? But flamingos. Um, but everything that is in the waters in Louisiana is up here. Okay, so we're going to do like this, then maybe something like that. And also, let's go ahead and treat the canoe. 
Tipikanu and Timbuktu. Um, now this water, uh, when you when you're in Canada and you you're painting water, you know it's it's amazing because every every geographical area has a different footprint, and uh, the water up here is very dark. Um, I think my opinion is that it has a lot of a lot of leaves in it, and and so the the surface of the 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 earth in the water below is dark, and so it's reflecting a lot of the dark that's in the water. And uh, so I'm going to now paint the the water. Now I'm going into the purple now. I don't want to do black in the water. Um, black behind the trees is okay because I'm going to be um, putting greens on top of those blacks. But here I may not put color on top of this. Okay, so I'm just painting some of the, uh, the darks in this purple. And as you can see, um, I, this is a, uh, probably an information, um, loaded painting. Um, but the idea is to be able to paint it quickly and have fun. So keep your brush moving. Picked up a little bit of that gray. That's okay. Let's make a nice soft edge. Soft edges are good anyway. Okay, so just picking up some of this uh, reflection here, still going across the, the surface of the water. Okay, so we're going to take in this darker color here below the canoe. That's going to be the shadow. And vertical on, in reflection in water is vertical strokes. If you want that mirror look, keep your strokes vertical. Okay, so there is going to be there's going to be a red blaze here. So I'm putting alizarin crimson down in here in the water. And so we're just bringing that alizarin up in here. Vertical strokes for all the folks. Okay, just going to go ahead and make put some alizarin crimson in here, even though I don't know for sure what's going to go on top. I guess I'm going to have to put some red trees up there. How about that? Okay, so just go ahead and going to go ahead and paint in there. Um, now I'm, I'm going into my greens, um, and this is a dark sap green. Okay, so I'm just going into the greens because most of this is, is really, even though it looks black, it's really dark, dark green. Um, and red and brown. And I'm going into a little bit of a lighter green right here at the bow of the canoe. Okay, and then going to drag that green down here. Now these little reflections I want to make sure that they're not equal in size or shape. Okay, taking my sap green and running it along the reflection of the, the white part of the canoe in the water, going into a 
Van Dyke Brown. It's a nice brown mixed with the green. It's a deep, deep green. Okay. Again, I want to finish the stroke with vertical strokes. I'm going to take just this is just a a brown. Okay, going to bring this all the way across here. I can uh, drag down color on top of this darker color later. Going into a lighter green. It's hitting that purple, which is mixing. That's okay. Okay, so we got the vert we got the horizontal strokes. Now we want the vertical strokes. Yeah, okay. We're going to take this same green color and bring it up here. Oh, almost touched the boat. It's not quite a boat. I guess that's a canoe. Okay, going to take that in there, go right around the edge of that. And I'm going to take this. I'll take it up to the shoreline. Don't want to paint out my paddle. You don't want to be up a creek without a paddle, right? Okay, um, not bad. Okay, we're just, this is the first statement. Now, the first statement is a, is a statement that the painting is not done yet. So you don't want to say, hey, mom, or you don't want your mom looking over your shoulder because she'll say, what is it? Wait until you're done and then show it to her. Then she'll go, ooh. Okay, um, okay, so now I'm going to go into uh, more of my landscape on top. So I'm going to my darker, darker green. And what is it? Doesn't that look black? It do. It do look black. So I'm going to go into my sap green. And I'm just going to paint this whole, these three trees, just the base. I can pick out. the edge of the trees just a little bit. I'll do it with this green here. Just so I can see it as I'm painting in the darker colors. Go back to my sap. That was a, just that little bit of light green makes that sap go bright. That's okay. We're going to just going to bring this down in here. We will um, go over this with a, probably with a palette knife. Okay, and we're going to do another green, evergreen, right in here. going to connect it to that brown field and that's where the evergreen is getting darker and darker and darker until it actually almost looks black. Now you just be patient with so many pieces in the painting. Um, it's easy to get discouraged with, you know, not having the satisfaction of seeing the, the finished product quickly. But just be patient. Keep on painting in what I call the rest of your acreage. It's kind of like plowing a field. You know, you're not done until you're done. So get that field laid in with paint. We're going to go ahead and put in some green up in here. And these are going to be two birch trees. So they're going to be a lighter green as birch trees are. Okay, so that back green color 
Uh, this, this one here is going to be a brighter green. So just a brighter green with the kind of serrated edge of the evergreen going down into the canopy of the rest of the forest, which are just all kinds of really, really pretty trees. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that green down. I'm just going to connect your connect your 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 color shapes with your other shapes next to it. Um, so I'm going to take that lighter green. I'm going to paint in the wisps of my white pine. All blowing in the wind. That's the crown of that pine. Okay, and white pine are so, are so pretty. They really do look like like life spirits. Um, Okay, so I think um, I'm going to take some of this purple gray and I'm just going to paint in a back color. And that could be a number of things. It could be a dead tree, a cluster of dead trees. You know how when dead trees die, they kind of look like um, soot. Um, a lot of trees are dying too, it's, it's a shame. Kind of scary. Um, okay, and then I'm going to paint in, I think, uh, over here. Well, that didn't record well. Um, so let me clean my brush. I'm going to squeegee my brush out. And I, I still like this, uh, this big work brush. And I'm going to paint in some bushes. And these bushes are the tops of them. They're kind of a, a gray green. So I would imagine that the sky is a bit overcast. Now that would not be surprising up here in Canada. It was funny because I, I came down from below the border. We won't say which country, but um, and when you watch the weather report up here, and um, it's cloudy all day, and then the sun comes out for 10 minutes, they call that partly cloudy. So sometimes the sun hides quite a bit behind the clouds. But what that, that gives you, uh, it gives you a very dramatic lighting situation. And uh, I think I'll do a gray tree in here. And uh, I think I'm going to pull in a gray up in here. Oh, got paint on the paper. Good thing. I'm not going to use that paper for anything, right? <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm going to go into my uh, my smaller bright. And uh, oh, let me use my, my filbert. This is my number six filbert. Okay, rounded corners, and uh, I think I'm going to go into my, my reds. Now, what I'm going to do right in here is I'm going to do a, a uh, I'm going to call it a rainbow of reds. So I'm going to start with the, this yellow orange, yellow orange. And might be going back in with a palette knife. Oh, I'm getting getting green on that, and I don't want that to happen too frequently. So clean your brush, or else you're going to be making a green. Okay, now I'm going to go into a an an orange, and just paint the tops of that yellow and the bottom of that yellow, orange. Pick up some of that yellow, take it into the orange. 
drag that green, that orange into the green. Now my brush is contaminated. So you see, I, I already picked up that green. So you want to squeegee your brush. Just take your paper towel, squeegee it, press out the paint. It's almost virtually clean um, or practically clean. Going back in here with the orange. Okay, where it is touching the tree, just, you only get one stroke. Now I got to clean the brush. I think I better wash it because just a little bit of green is going to knock down that color. Okay, so going into the, the bright orange, this is pure orange. And so I'm making a rainbow, rainbow effect. And now I'm going to go into my red. And I'm going to go into my red below. Touch the green, good for a couple of strokes. Now it's contaminated, need to squeegee it. Now I'm going into my darker red. And touch the green, contamination, need to clean my brush. Keep your brushes clean. You want to have a clean brush. Otherwise, you have a muddy painting. So, going into this darker red, do the same here. Okay, now I'm going into my alizarin crimson with red. So, this is even a darker red. And at this stage, it's okay if the brush gets a little bit of green in it because it's just going to make the red darker, and that's what I want. So down in here, just a real dark alizarin. Touching the green, that's okay. Touching the green, got red and got, got it, made it darker. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, we can take some of that color while we have it and just... run it vertically on the water. Keep it dark, this dark alizarin. Where it gets lighter, it's going to be closer to the shore. One stroke going down probably is all I can do without contamination. Okay, um, now I'm going to go into uh, some other reds in here. I'll start with my darker reds. As I'm painting this, I'm reconsidering. I think I'm going to go into my, my birches and my lighter greens and do my reds last. So clean my brush in the, in the solution, which is odorless solvent. I get that at Home Depot. And I'm going into my lighter greens. This would be the greens of the birch trees. So you're just massing in the average tone or, or shade of green. Okay, I got contamination on the brush. Clean the brush. And I think I'll do another little wisp of green here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. That's our, our white maple, or our white pine, excuse me, botanic, botanical scientist out there. I'm sure there's one or two. <laughs> Some of my friends are, they have, a, well, they have a beautiful gardens. This year, we have a lot of worms that are coming down from the trees. I don't know what's wrong, but every year is a new bug. 
I'm going to have to talk to the nursery and ask them how I can get rid of them. They're little fuzzy caterpillars. They're eating up. They're starting to eat up the plants. I don't like them. Even though I, I try, you know, to not kill anything. I don't want them around, so I squish them. Okay, so we're going to make this tree here that's left. It's a little lonely tree. We're going to make it not so lonely. Okay, so just painting what I designated as unpainted, right? So I'm just filling in that space, I'm not worrying too much about recording what it is. I'm going to do that later. And while we got that green, let's go ahead and do that color green right up in here. Oh, contamination, squeegee the brush with the paper towel, go back in here. Okay, squeegee the brush. You know, I'm constantly, I always have a paper towel in my left hand. So you always want to have that there in your left hand and keep your brush clean. Now I am flipping my brush here and there to, I'm going to take this off the top. Okay, and I think also while I, while I have this very gay green here, happy green, happy green, I'm going to put it up there. Okay, so uh, let's see here, um, painting some darker greens here. I don't know what that is. That could be a pine tree. Let's call it a pine tree. Let's make it a dark pine tree. Okay, and let's go ahead and paint that in. Sometimes at this stage where I am trying to, to get this painting painted, I will go ahead and just make a call that is not exactly true to the reference, just to get it painted. Because I want to have, um, I don't want to be over concerned with um, what it is I'm painting. I'm more concerned with the design of my three threes. So is my white shape, does my white shape have a good design? That is more important to me than what it is. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach these kind of what I would call dry bushes to the edge of the lake. And as we go over to the left, I'm going to go darker. This is that purple. And that is Tom Thompson's head. Okay, and moving on here to the rocks in the foreground. Okay, so we got this rock here. Got this rock here. And here we got a couple of rocks. Not too worried about the the uh, the smudging of the paint uh, of the white. Um, okay, so just recording that that rock in the water and as I have this darker color I'm going to go ahead and paint in my canoe. Yeah, so here's the, the bow of the canoe, the, the weight of the passenger is pushing up the bow out of the water. Now this canoe is a, I'll go back in. Okay, so, um, this canoe is a dark green. Taking some of that purple over here. 
Okay, now what I would like to have is um, a grassy shore. Okay, so we will have a grassy shore. You know, just thank God I don't want a hippopotamus. But I'm going to keep true to my reference, so no hippopotamuses today. Okay, so I'm going to do the grassy, grassy shore. Grassy shore, grassy shore, grassy shore. I say that 10 times. Okay, so here's the grassy shore. Okay, so this is a it's kind of a, a grayed out green on my palette. Okay, I'm not too concerned about how it meets the water because I'm going to determine that with a darker line. Okay, so here is grassy shore here. And as it goes into the water, it's going to be darker green. I could restate. I want to be restating my um, my rocks and all of that. Okay, so we're going back in here to where the rocks are, doing the rocks. That's a big rock like that. That's what that is. Okay, let's do that. I think we got rocks in the mine. Let's get a rock there. Let's make that was going to be a bush. Make it. I'm going to make it a rock. Let's get another rock in here. Okay. Now I'm going to quickly go into my my boats and make the boats a dark a darker red. I'm gonna let that yellow ochre, that orange coming through. Okay, I'm gonna give Tommy Tommy Thompson a dark red Hunter's jacket. It's just a blob and a and a stroke. Nothing super detailed. Try to take some of this alizarin crimson and just touch the inside of that boat on the shadow of the edge there and now I'm going to take my filbers I'm going to be blending in my reflections just softening them and 
Okay. Vertical strokes. Let's make this um, this tree lighter purple. Okay, so I'm just going to touch this. This is a dark green. some just darker greens in the water, giving that water more information. Information to me is different, different colors, different, different colors. Just give it more things to look at. This rock is needing some work here. Okay, and I'm going to be coming in and doing the foliage on the trees in a second here. Okay, so take my smaller Number two, bright brush with my rock highlight. It's going to restate that. Restate it here. So when I first laid in that white shape in the rock, that was just so I could see my white design. And you can see as it's developing, um, as I'm what I call tweaking it, the, um, just some warmer tones in the rock. Now, I could make those bushes rocks, but I won't. These are supposed to be bushes. But what I want to do is I want to go in and before I uh, lay in more foliage, I want to uh, kind of just finish this water scene. This is a darker purple going in here. Just flip my brush over. Okay, and what is in, so we've got to take that red here and just wipe it down. There is Tommy in the water. After all, that's where he ended up, right? Terrible, sorry. Mysterious. Found his, found his body in the water. One reason why he's so famous, I think. Okay. Um, now I am going to come in with my palette knife and just go through this foliage and lay in um, just texture, 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 where I have my tree shapes. And I'm just going to lay in texture. So this is just pure sap green, and we'll do the same over here. Oh, up the paper. Okay, so we're just laying in texture, and it's not that important as far as you know too much rendering. Um, okay, so I'm bringing in the top of this palette knife is picking up the surface color, which I like. And especially, um, you know, I mean, I wasn't expecting that per se, but you let those things work for you. If all of a sudden you see something that it's doing that is a little bit unanticipated, but can it work for you? That's making a problem. That's making lemon out of lemonade. So you let that 
become nominee. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this green and bring it up into here. Squeegee my palette knife, come in with a darker color, okay, I'm going to do the same between the trees. Where there is dark, I'm going to put darker texture. Okay, here is going to be just shades of those trees. Dark coming around. So this class might get a little bit longer today just to finish this up. And of course, you can refer to this later on Facebook on our Facebook page. And please tell your friends if you think they would like to paint along. I just like to see it. I hope all of you are doing well and all your families are doing well. I truly mean that. And this is a time for love, definitely for love. Love and tolerance. And what a great time to practice that, right? Okay, um, I think that I'm going to bring in some more of this, this lighter green. Yeah, because when you, when you come in with a palette knife, after you've done your brush strokes, you always start off with your darker, darker color. And then you move up the scale to your lighter colors. This is underneath the birch tree. This shadows in that birch tree. This is just some kind of tree. We can call it anything, a maple. Okay, let's bring in some darker colors here underneath this tree. Okay, and let's bring in some darker colors around here. Now that I have that, This is that is the shoreline. The green below it is the reflection in the water. That's just the pretty grassy pretty grassy shoreline. Okay, I'm going to come in with the lighter green. We'll just bring this up here. Yeah, that's a nice fir tree. Now, guess what? That needs to be in the water. So we'll do that. Okay, let's go into the into the um, white pine. Okay, now just a few of these strokes down in here. 
not too many, just give them some friends. Okay, let's uh, do the same in here. Where it's getting higher, it's getting lighter, and it's getting lit more. So that's what's happening with that. There you go. Nice big blob. Okay, just going to bring that over into there. And looking at that nice green grassy color, our focal point is going to be right around in here somewhere. Oh man, that is bright. But that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to come up with my reds. So I'm going to do my darker reds, and there's a lot of darker reds that are behind this forest, in the forest. Because this is a boreal forest, and in the fall they have these they have the pine trees with the maples and with the oaks and with the elms and the birches and the aspens and they're all just a blazing through the greens. Just really, very pretty. It's un unbelievably beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do a, a red coming through the back of these uh, evergreens. Okay, there's a red bush in here. We'll just say there is. Okay, so moving up the scale. Um, here is that bright red. Okay, so coming through here. There's some red coming in here. Okay. And we'll have some red coming in here. I guess you can tell by now that I like red. Okay, we're going to have some red. These could be small little sh shrubs that have red on them. Okay, so moving up the scale into the brighter brighter red because we're going lighter and lighter. Put a few of those darks in here. And I don't want to put too much red in the water because so I keep that red in the tree. We're moving into my orange. Put a little bit of orange in here. Ooh, that's pretty. Couldn't help myself. Okay, there's some little little baby little baby orange bushes. And going into the yellow orange, a yellow, and getting bright, brighter. Yeah, just some accent there. That's okay. And a little yellow friend. There's a couple of yellow friends right in there. We're now going for the bright yellow center.
kind of like it's on fire, right? But that's how it looks. I mean, it just looks like they're on fire. Okay, um, let me take some of that orange and bring it here. To my boat. And, okay, so I told you I was going to do a, a white streak in the water, so here we go. Um, and that is going to be a, a blue-gray. It's going to look like white when I do it. And it's going to be random. It's going to go like here. I'm going to do one more, one little wait. So I'm going to take my white and I'm just going to touch my tree with pure white. Just to knock that, make that a pure white hot spot right in the tree. Another spot right up in here. How about another one right here? This is the most fun part of the painting, right at the end when you're putting in your lights. When I'm putting in these lights right here, it reminds me of putting in the diamond in a ring setting. Um, and it, in a way, it's like that because the whites lay on top and, and they, I'm just going to drag this down. The lights lay on top and they pick up uh, the light in the, in the room or whatever light is lighting the painting and they do look like diamonds. So that's just taking that glow into the water there. Maybe there's a little lake here. And let's take some of that, that stone color into the water. And okay, so I think that I am nearly done, folks. Okay, so here it, well, I haven't done the, let me just touch this, touch the face of Tom Thompson. Just touch the face. So we will use just a little ochre in his hand. And I'm just going to touch this white shape on the boat. And this part of this white shape here on the bow. And maybe right where that bow is, I'm just going to do pure white. Pure white. And also where the where the rocks are, I'm just going to add a little dark line. That's where the um, that's the shore on the rock. Okay, folks. I hope you learned a lot here. Um, you can definitely reference uh, this later. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and sign up for our monthly newsletter and stay in touch. Uh, please don't, uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Paint with Steve every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live at the Steve Tracy Gallery. God bless you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.